heads. All right, cup it is. Uh, Surfers. All right, thanks. So Roger Federer through his mascot there. It's rather a nice little touch. There's the kids who come in, come in into the players. Federer has won the Boston Center show. So here we are, the first of our two semi-finals. It's Switzerland against Australia. It's the number one seed, Roger Federer, against the number 17, Leighton Hewitt. That's how it all was yesterday on down the left hand column of the quarterfinals. And Federer playing pretty darn well against, one has to say, a slightly jaded Moyer after the exertions in Rome last week had brought him that title. And Hewitt, well, he was uh, just too good for Meltzer, really, in the end. He imploded. And they'll be meeting keenly today, these two great champions who are full of pride, of course, as one expects champions to be. A matter of personal pride wanting to win this one today. Let's look at the players in more detail for you. He's 22 now, Roger Federer, turned pro in 98, and those 14 singles titles include, of course, Wimbledon last year, Philippoussis was his victim in that final, and Safin was his victim in the Australian Open final this year. Other titles have fallen to him in Dubai and Indian Wells. He beat him in that far. Nine million plus dollars in prize money. And 33. Only three men have beaten him this year. Hinman, as I said, Nadal in uh, Miami and Costa in Rome. And look at that ascending indecent race position. He is now the world number one from 29 in 2000. And uh, that is a measure of the improvement that he's made in that time. Masters Series, 61 and 35, a very healthy score that, or ratio, of win loss. Two titles to his name. Here was where he started his wins in the Masters Series a couple of years ago, he's Safin in the final, and as I said, Indian Wells this year. He's also won the Tennis Masters Cup at the end of last year with Agassi in that final. So he has already improved on that third round loss here last year when Philippoussis beat him. And these are the results that brought him through to the semi-finals. Gaudio took a set from him, but nobody else did. Penti, Gonzalez and Moyer all tried hard, but were outplayed. And I think it was uh, a measure of his uh, ability that he was able to cast aside Moyer so handily yesterday, though, as I say, Moyer was a little bit jaded, but he's a great clay court player and a great competitor, but he was impotent against, against Federer yesterday. Well, all four players that Federer has beaten this week are all very good on this surface, so that will have given him a lot of confidence. And, of course, Hewitt hasn't played particularly well, or hasn't as yet in his career played as well on this surface as any of the others. 21 singles titles to his name. Of course, those coming in Adelaide back in 1998. Of course, his hometown, born and raised there, and uh, still lives there, incidentally. And the last of those titles coming earlier this year in Rotterdam on the indoor court. So his win-loss record is pretty healthy, 23 and 5. And this is the eighth event that he's played this year. And you can see the two years that he did finish here in number one were 2001, when he won the US Open, beating Sampras in the final. And then 2002, when he famously won Wimbledon, beating David Nalbandian in the final. So he's already managed to win two of the biggest tournaments in the game. But he dearly loved to add a clay court title to that collection. This year he's pretty good in terms of his ranking nine currently, but I think that will get higher as we progress to the faster surfaces. Two Master Series titles, one, both in Indian Wells, 2002 and 2003. Mike's playing on the hard courts, obviously, and two Tennis Masters Cup titles as well, 2001 in Sydney and 2002 in Shanghai, which were obviously the years that he finished ranked number one in the world. In terms of his progress through to the semi-finals, played pretty well against Bjorkman, particularly in that opening set, I mean, lasted about 20 minutes, made very few unforced errors, and then came back from a 5-1 deficit in the second set against Haas in the second round, so that also gave him a little bit of confidence, and then... It was a hard-fought three-set encounter against Flavio Soretta of Brazil, out on court one, it's some heavy drizzle, so he did well to come through that. Soretta was playing 
pretty well at the moment. And then yesterday, he really didn't have too much to do against the young Austrian because Meltzer made too many unforced errors, had a bit of a sore shoulder as well. So that will have left Hewitt with a little bit extra in the tank for today's encounter, which I think he'll need. Well, I think he will because uh, the serving of Federer and the forehand of Federer are both lethal weapons. And they've met uh, 10 times, which is an extraordinary number, really. But I suppose not when you consider that they've both been near the top of the men's game for the last few years and therefore bound to meet in the latter stages of tournaments. And the last meeting was that one earlier this year in round of 16, Federer winning uh, on the way to the title. And um, as you were saying, this is the first meeting on play, and the one before the one on the screen there was at the end of last year, that semi-final of the Davis Cup, when Hewitt won after losing the first two sets and reminding us what a doughty fighter he is. So I think Federer will have that one in the back of his mind, even though it was on a hard court. There's no doubt about it. Um, that's one that it's very difficult to forget. Steve Ulrich is the man in charge in of the first of today's semi-finals, but it certainly will have a bearing on Federer's psyche because when you lose a match like that, it does hurt, irrespective of the fact that he said, oh, you know, I, I got over it and it's not a problem. But you know, no matter what situation you find yourself in, Hewitt can come back. And this, of course, over the sprint distance, best of three sets. And it's going to be an interesting battle for me. And a fast start will matter. So here we are for the first of our two semi-finals. It's Federer against Hewitt, Switzerland against Australia, number one seed against number 17. Hewitt taking his time. Federer all ready to get on with it. He won the toss, said he would serve. So here we go. That's Federer in a nutshell. Big serves and big forehands. Two shots and the backhand can be a little bit uh, unsure of itself early in the match, and it was yesterday against Moyer until suddenly it came to life. And no surprise there that that was a love service game. And I think it is so interesting that Federer is playing with such confidence and yet without a coach. He's not. Uh, his girlfriend here. There she is, Miroslava. She's been courtside all the time. His sister was here earlier, Diana, and he was saying that she got bored. Not, <laughs> not with the tennis, but with all the hanging around. Well, he does win a lot. Can get boring, I suppose. That's Pavel Kovic, who travels as fitness trainer. He's got another trainer at home here, Paganini. See how important it is to keep a good length against Federer. Stewart here forced onto the back foot by the return and therefore dropping the ball slightly short. Federer all over it. Oh. Well, now, is that in 
intimidation from Federal responsible for that double fault, perhaps. Third. and Leighton's mum and dad, Clem and Sherilyn, they're always caught so. Started off playing rules, but he was um, a little bit too slight of stature for that. And mum, Cheryl, and a PE teacher, so there's plenty of athleticism in the family. stages of this match again Hewitt not able to keep the ball deep enough real pace on it yeah he's got that ability just to snap through the shot immaculate opening and he just has steadily got better throughout this tournament his first really tough match was against Gaudio in the first round three sets Said earlier, but, I mean, even though he's the best player in the world, he hadn't played a lot on the plate. Mm -hmm. Second round of Rome, this is the cost that he needed to get through a tough opening round against Gaudio. Gaudio, one of the most difficult players to beat on a clay court. Federer managed to do that, and as you said, he's gone from strength to strength. Yes, after Gaudio, Haas looked difficult. Haas had his chances and blew them. Soretta. Oh, that was Leighton Hewitt. Soretta had a tough match against uh, Hewitt and took him to three sets. Oh, brilliant again. Some outrageous forehands from Federer early on. Hewitt did well to dig that one out, but he's just watching that fly by. So what department is he lacking? None. Three love. Well, as I was saying, Federer, Lapenti four and one, Gonzalez five and one, Moya four and three just cruising through each match and getting better all the time. Three love, Federer. Perfect as well. Oh. What can you say about this man? It hasn't already been said. Well, he's saying 
as well with his racket as well. I mean, what an awesome start by Federer. You know, this strikes me as rather like living in the sun, which can actually get boring. You know, you don't get any rain any day. It's always perfect every day. I've done it. It can get boring. Well, tennis at that level is almost boring because he does a bad shot. When? Two things I'd say there. Watching Federer play like this could never bore me. It's totally captivating. And you need to speak to my wife about living in the sun because I don't think she would find it boring. <laughs> No, well, you know what I mean. I, uh, it's, a, it's a rough analogy, but uh, you, it's not boring either. But he's making too many mistakes. criticism of Federer's game and it is absolutely minor is that at times on his backhand he just takes too big a step the last step is too big and therefore he doesn't have perfect balance on the ball and it's tough to make those last minute adjustments well Hewitt as you would expect of him digging in here he's got a game point he badly needs it Too wide. Just another routine point by Federer, just bossing around former world number one, corner to corner. And keeping much the better length of the two men. Snatched at that. That's not a proper shot, really. <laughs> a little bit under pressure from the Federer forehand, which was annoying. Again, this is a nice match at times for Federer's play. He's lobbing that ball up on the backhand side to Hewitt with no real pace on it, knowing the Australian can't generate enough from the back to beat him. And when he gets his chance on the forehand, he's cracking it. Just checking that one that landed on the line. So many already have. Here's a point for Fowler. just to hang in the rally. It's really under pressure on that backhand side. Oh boy, I that wide. Third guessed himself on that one, just because he feels so much pressure to get a game on the board. 
Everett did a good job of committing as late as possible to one side. One way to win a point at Dutch Federer. Wow, well, that just shot through. Oh, <laughs> that's a foot lower than Federer expected it. Went for a little bit too much. Hewitt. Yeah, there was a bit of a gap, but I mean, what a wonderful point again by Federer. And if you just look at Hewitt, I mean, how many shots in that rally did he have any sort of time to prepare for? He was just getting there in time to hit the ball. Last minute decisions the whole time. Federer just moving that ball so sweetly around the court. too long frustration produces another really quite major error but uh, really there is some excuse I mean unforced errors is going to go up there but an awful lot of Hewitt's errors have been forced by this absolutely immaculate play from Federer it's the most lovely sound every time he hits the ball quite a part of the end product He's a rare talent. I mean, he's an exceptional tennis player. I mean, for my money, he's one of the most beautiful players to have ever played the game. And I know his career is very young. Regardless of how many titles he wins, just to watch him play tennis is a real pleasure. Beautiful picture, isn't he? You just stand and sort of in awe of it. And it's incredibly rare in anybody's lifetime, really, to have the privilege of watching a player like this. for a whitewash here. Here are points for five love, Federer. Players have been complaining about the balls here. 
but not Fedra. Just confirmed by Federer there, and I think uh, Hewitt will accept that. Yes. Five love. Well, I hope Hewitt can uh, somehow play himself into this match, because at the moment he's not in it, he's just being railroaded. Love five, first set. to drop a set against anybody, 6-love. Oh. Again, I just think that he's come out here with the wrong strategy against a guy like Federer. He's not going to out-hit him. Federer moves too well at the back of the court. He needs to just cut down those errors. They need to, they need to not have a one in front of it, those unforced errors. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Mark. I just feel that if he did slow it down, he might just sort of annoy this guy a little bit out of his rhythm because he is relishing the speed of shot that Hewitt's giving him. These are two points for this first set to Federer, six love. Magnificent set of tennis played by Roger Federer. Welcome back. I think this is what you'd call a quick start by Roger Federer. 23 minutes, six love over Leighton Hewitt in the first today's semi finals. We'll be live for the final tomorrow, noon, on Sky Sports Extra. To follow this first semi final of the day, Ivan Lubicic will take on defending champion GMO Coria. But for the second time, in as many meetings, Roger Federer has given Leighton Hewitt a bagel. How will the former world number one respond? Mark and Bill. Well, that was a, a tantalising, teasing way to end, and yet so appropriate and so good. And pretty well everything he's touched has been, uh, it's just...